Today we're going to take a look at two triangles, which are called special right triangles. They're right triangles that are special. There's two of them. And they're going to present a scenario where you're going to have a right triangle with only one side, and you're going to have to find the other sides. Okay. This can get a little hairy, so we'll go slow and uh, make sure that everybody's with us. Okay, here we go. Warm up question to the nearest tenth of a foot. How far is it between home plate and second base? Is, it, is there anybody that has absolutely no clue about baseball? Zero? Like you don't even know what a baseball field look, a diamond looks like? Yeah. You know what a baseball diamond looks like? What shape is it? A diamond. Also known as? A rhombus. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody? A square? It's a square. Correct. It's the same distance from home to first as it is from first to second as it is from second to third, third to fourth. Otherwise, it would completely change the game. Does everybody know how far that distance is? Nobody plays baseball? It is more than a foot. Thank you, Ben. Between one and a hundred feet. Uh, that is also an astute observation. It's 90 feet from home to first base. It is. All right, solve the problem. That's a picture of me, by the way. <laughs> I was a little kid. I used to play a lot of baseball. I like to wear my sweatpants real high. Here. And I look good. And I look good in stripes. Are you being serious? That's a picture of me. Wear my black gym shoes. I meant to throw the ball over here. The ball actually went over there. That didn't work out so well. Yeah, if you don't already have it out, you're going to need your calculator, by the way. I don't know. Should the answer be bigger or smaller than 90? Bigger. Bigger. Since it's a baseball diamond, this diamond is actually, as Paul said, just a square, so these are all right angles. And as I mentioned, this is 90, this is 90, and I'm looking for that distance, which you call x. Megan, what'd you get? 127.3 feet. Anybody else? Same answer? Yep. How'd you do it, Megan? I did the I did the two Tell me how you set it up. Ninety squared plus ninety squared equals x. Well done. Solve that, you get one hundred twenty-seven point three. Any problems? Beautiful. Now that works nicely if we know we have a square. Okay, good. That square. When we chopped it in half, creates the first of our special right triangles called the 45-45-90 triangle. Why do you think it's called the 45-45-90 triangle, Will? Because the two angles are 45 degrees and then the top is 90. You got three angles. Two of them are 45. One of them is 90. Good. And it comes from being half of a square. So when we take that baseball diamond and we chop it in half, looking at home to first, first to second, and then from home to second, we get this 45, 45, 90 triangle. We're going to call the legs A, and we're going to call the hypotenuse A square roots of 2. And I'll show you where that comes from, but we're going to use that a lot. That's important. 
draw the picture and put it in your notes because you're going to be referencing that a lot and that's commonly referred to as a general form. square root of 2 come from? Yeah. Why the square root of 2? No ideas? Well, solve the Pythagorean, the Pythagorean theorem. If we start with a and a, we get a squared plus a squared is equal to this other distance. Let's call it d squared. Okay, we'll pretend we don't know this information yet and get to it eventually. A squared plus A squared is? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's back up. What's A squared plus A squared? Good. That was scary. How do I get D by itself? Take the square root. Square root of D squared is D. The square root of 2a squared is the same thing as the square root of a squared is a times the square root of 2. Okay, that's where it comes from. Notice in the general form, you have two side lengths. You have a leg or you have a hypotenuse. That's it. No other possibilities. Therefore, there's only two possibilities to solve this problem. Here's the leg length. How long is the hypotenuse? Here's the hypotenuse. How long is the leg length? So in the problem that we just did, we knew that A was 90. Therefore, the hypotenuse should be 90 square roots of 2. Punch in 90 square roots of 2 on your calculator, please. 127.3. Bingo. So there's our answer. Question, Devin. Uh, so the two legs have to be equal? Yeah. Because not only is it a 45-45-90 triangle, but it's also an isosceles right triangle. Those two terms will be used interchangeably. So in a problem, you might be given a picture like this where you're told that it's 45, 45, and 90. However, you might also be given this, and you'll be expected to realize that that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. They're the same thing, isosceles right and 45, 45, 90. We good? I'll show you a process to solve these problems that will make your life a little bit easier and probably help you along the way. So we'll start with this as an example. You might need a picture for this one, again, if you don't know baseball very well. Do you all know what a foul pole is? No. 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 Yeah. I'll draw you a picture. Here's home plate. We already know that there's a baseball diamond. Looks something like, ooh, that's a mess. But as you go down first base line, way out here, there's a foul pole where they have to hit it inside that pole in order for it to be in, in bounds. And then down this, there is also another foul pole. So the ball has to be hit between those two poles. This distance we know. That's 400, no we don't. Yes, we do, 466.7 feet. We want to know how long this is, which would be the same as that. So the first thing we've established is that we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. How do we know that? Because we have a 90 degree angle down at home plate and we have the legs congruent, which makes it an isosceles right triangle, which makes it a 45, 45, 90 triangle. The first example that we did, I knew the leg length and so we were able to calculate the hypotenuse and we were able to use Pythagorean theorem there. The idea here, however, is we don't want to continue to use Pythagorean theorem. You can get by with Pythagorean theorem on this triangle, on the next one, and it's not going to work out. So the process is the following. Ask yourself which side of, well, first ask yourself what kind of triangle do you have? We have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Second question, which side do I know? Do I know one of the legs or do I know the hypotenuse? In this case, I know the hypotenuse. Step three, set the hypotenuse equal to the value from the general form. What that means is, I know the hypotenuse is 466.7. Set that equal to the hypotenuse in the general form, which would be a square root of 2. Now solve for a. How do I solve for a?
Little help, please. Three thirty point zero. Three thirty. Yeah. Okay. Feet. Once you know what A is, plug in chug back into the general form. So we know in the general form that A, which is the length of the legs, are both 330. And so we're done. Okay, let me go through that again. What kind of triangle do you have? What side do you know? Set it equal to the value from the general form. Solve for A, plug in chug. And I have this later in the slideshow summarized for you, but I just want to give you a, a, uh, an overview now. Okay, so we look at two examples from the 45, 45, 90. Here's a leg, how long is the hypotenuse? Here's the hypotenuse, how long is the leg? We good so far? Good. Because <coughs> it's going to get a little crazy. 30, 60, 90 triangle is our second one. So the 45, 45, 90 triangle was half of a square. The 30, 60, 90 triangle is half of an equilateral triangle. One's yellow. How big are each of the angles? 60. No. 60, 60, 60. 60, 60, and 60, correct. So let's take that and we'll call all the sides A. Because we don't know how long they are and we need some. We could call it X, but that gets too confusing, so I'm just going to call it A. When we got a 60 degree angle down there. Now chop it in half. How big is that angle? Why? Half of 60? What did you say, Madeline? What? What did you say? Half. 90 minus 90. Yeah, you can do triangle sum also. Regardless, we have a 30 degree angle up there. This splits the triangle into three different sides. The 45, 45, 90 triangle has two different sides. The 30, 60, 90 has three different sides. There is a short leg, a long leg, and the hypotenuse. How do I find each of those? Let's do the easy one. How do I find the hypotenuse? The largest side. The opposite from the largest side. Angle. 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 It's opposite from the 90 degree angle. It's also the longest side. How do I find the short side? Opposite the smallest angle, which would be opposite the 30 degree angle, and therefore the long leg is opposite the 60 degree angle. You have to be, you have to be able to identify each of those things. Okay, uh, if that's A, how long is this one down here? One half A. One half A, good. And now, if this is A and this is one half A, can we find that side? Yeah. How? Yeah. Nope, that's for 45, 45, 90 trying. This is one half A. Whoops, one half A. How do I find that side? Why is it one half A? Great question. Who said, uh, Paul, why is it one half A? Because you're cutting, this, when it was an equilateral triangle, all the sides were A, and then you cut the side in half. Yep. Let's call this, for discussion purposes, uh, alpha. That's an alpha, by the way. It's like a fishy. How do I find alpha? Go. Cool. Beautiful. Which one's the hypotenuse? Okay. A. So one half A quantity squared plus alpha squared equals A squared. And I'm solving for alpha. What's one half A quantity squared? Quarter A squared. Say it. One quarter A squared. Yep. One fourth A squared plus alpha squared equals A squared. Subtract 1 fourth a squared from both sides. I get alpha squared is equal to 3 fourths a, whoop, that's supposed to be an a, a squared. How do I get alpha by itself? Square root. Square root. So alpha would be equal to the square root of 3 over 2 times a. Square root of 3 fourths, same thing as the square root of 3 over square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Done. Unfortunately, two of the three sides have fractions in them. How do you feel about fractions? No. I'm not a fan either. Is there an easy way to get rid of all the fractions? Yeah. What? You can multiply over by 
multiply everything by 2. That would make our life a lot easier. If I multiply everything by 2, the denominators would disappear, and we'd have something that we can work with a little bit easier. So we did that already. Uh-huh, good. Yep, let's go. Come on. Here we go. Uh, da, there you go. We're going to use that as a general form. So instead of starting with a, I should have started with 2a, and that way I won't get any fractions. Careful when you copy this down, make sure you do it correctly, because it will have a profound impact on you solving the problems. Stretching or questions? Doing a little bit of yoga there? Yep. I understand. Okay, are we good? Ready for some fun? No? Too bad. There you go. All right, question number one. What kind of triangle do we have? 30, 60, 90. Beautiful. Now, be aware of the fact that what commonly happens is when we start covering this material, people want to make every triangle into a 45, 45, 90, or 30, 60, 90. There are still triangles out that are just plain old right triangles that you can solve for. This one happens to be a 30, 60, 90, number one. Number two, what side do we know? The short leg, the long leg, or the hypotenuse? Hypotenuse. hypotenuse? hypotenuse. Good. What is the value of the hypotenuse in the general form? 2a. 2a. Set the length that you know equal to the value from the general form. Solve for a. Chuck. So now the other two lengths are a and a square roots of 3. Which is which? What is ac? Is that a or a square roots of 3? A. a. So therefore that's 8. That makes cb a square roots of 3, which in this case would be 8 square roots of 3. Done. Are you allowed to like, simplify it into an actual number? That is an actual number. Like you mean an approximation? Yeah. No. And that's the catch with these problems, is that when you have 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles, you're going to have to give exact answers. So Pythagorean theorem won't help you much here. Okay. And the other thing is the reason Pythagorean theorem won't help you is because you're only starting with one chunk of information there. Just that to solve the problem. Is it making any sense whatsoever? No, I wouldn't. I would just learn a general form and then plug and chuck. Okay, let's try another one. Let's, or look at a blank screen. All right, here we go. Just move the 16 somewhere else. But again, I'll take you through the whole process. So the whole process is, um, what kind of triangle do we have? 60, what kind of right triangle? 30, 60, 90. What side do I know? Short leg, long leg, hypotenuse. Long leg, correct, because it's across from the 60 degree angle. What's the value of the long leg in the general form? A squared. Solve for A. And I don't know what kind of business you did last year in math, but you do not have to rationalize denominators in here. You could leave it like that. We will see some problems where your life could be made a little bit easier if you rationalize it, but you can get by just fine without rationalizing it. Okay, so now we know A, so plug and chug. How long is AC? Say again. No. You said it wrong. It's not 16 squared, it's a 3. Oh, 16 divided. There you go. How long is the hypotenuse AB? Which in this case would be? No calculators. Yes, sir? It would be 32 over 2 squared to 3. No. It's close. 32 over square root of 3. There you go. 32 over the square root of 3. 
Multiplying fractions by two, you multiply the numerator by two, not the denominator. And we're done. The other scenario that I didn't have for you is if yeah, if I gave you the short leg. Well, if I gave you the short leg, there's not a lot to do. You already know what A is. You just plug and chug for the other side. Double it to get the hypotenuse. Multiply it by the square root of 3 to get the long leg. Okay? This is going to be fun. Okay. Try that one. If you're feeling saucy, you could also calculate the area. Right, that's what I said. Sorry, I thought it said height. Which you're going to need to find the height anyways to find the area. So find the area anyway, after you find the height. Would help if I read my own slideshows. Notice it says exact, so you should have a radical in your answer. seen Frozen? 140 times? Yeah. I know when I was down at Disney last year, they were by far the most popular characters for people to see. All right, we good? Yeah. Anybody got an answer? Goodbye. 62.35. No, exact answer. Oh. Actually, 36 squares of 3? That's what I got. You thought it was 18? Oh boy. There's some confusion. Okay, let's see. Uh, Ashley, tell me what you did. Good. And then, uh, so the small leg would be six. Right, this would be six, good. And then the hypotenuse would be 12 because it's 2A. Right. Which we also knew because it's an equilateral triangle. Yeah. Good. Now the kicker how long is that green guy? Um, six squares of three. Well done. Okay. That's the hard part. Right? So then the easy part is finding the area. Formula for the area of a triangle, actually? Say again? Half base times height. Half base times height. The base is? Six, uh, 12. 12. The height is? Six squared. Oh. Units here? Meter squared. Meter squared. Well done. Let's give it up for that one. Nicely done. If you wanted to, you could have found the area of this triangle by doing one half six times the six, squ six squared of three, and then double it to get the other one, but it's just as easy to take the entire length of the original purple triangle. Okay? Like I said before, you gotta give up on Pythagorean theorem for these. It's not gonna be helpful. It's the general form that's gonna be the key to solving these problems. And again, also remember the difference between exact and approximate.
keep doing that. This is what I want. Bingo. Okay, there's the summary of the steps again. If you don't already have it under control, you might want to write that down. Which type of triangle are we talking about? Now, what's included in problem number or step number one is also maybe it's not a 45, 45, 90 or a 30, 60, 90. Maybe it's just a plain old right triangle that you apply Pythagorean theorem to. I'm sorry? No, I just didn't hear what you said. Plug and chug? Yeah. You know what that means? Take your answer and plug it in. Yeah. And then chug is to grind it out. Yeah. It's fun to say. It is fun to say. You're right. Plug and chug. Which side do you know? Uh, if it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, are you talking about one of the legs? Or are you talking about the hypotenuse? In a 30, 60, 90, you're looking at short leg, long leg hypotenuse. General form, referring back to that general form again. You have to be careful once you start comparing the two of them because they're very different. The 45, 45, 90 triangle has radical two and it's on the hypotenuse. The 30, 60, 90 triangle has radical three, but it's on one of the legs. Uh, set them equal, solve, plug and chug. Okay. That'll get you through just about every one of these problems. Are we good? Day two, which I think I still need to unlock. Everybody got this? I turn it off? No. No?